We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that planting hedges and flower strips in orchards helps to support wild bee communities, thereby improving pollination. The trees stretch out of sight, acres of apples pruned to perfection over polished lawns, Pedicured petals that bloom prematurely, barren crops beholden to the buzzing of the wild as strips of colour reach out across the grove. Clusters of blossom wrapped in silent prayer to the fruitful touch of their winged begetter. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the Journal of Applied Ecology, which has found that wild bee communities benefit from the complementarity of hedges and flower strips in apple orchards. Wild bees importantly pollinate both crop and wild plants, yet in intensive agricultural landscapes, wild bees are rare due to the resource limitations of nectar and pollen. To sustain wild bee populations, bee-attractive flowers need to be available during the entire growing season, but in mass flowering crop monocultures like fruit trees, Flowers are usually only in bloom for a short time. In this new study, researchers compared flower resources in wild bee populations across 18 apple orchards in the Lake Constance region of Germany, a major apple growing region, from 2018 to 2020. These orchards varied in features containing combinations of perennial flower strips and hedges. Wild bee species were found to visit flowering hedges early in the season from March to June whereas they visited perennial flower strips later in the season from June to August in the first year of planting and from April onwards in subsequent years. Based on the findings of this study, the researchers recommend that farmers plant a network of perennial flower strips in combination with flower-rich hedges to support wild bees and with it, their capacity to provide pollination to crops. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. The trees stretch out of sight. Acres of apples pruned to perfection over polished lawns. Pedicured petals that bloom prematurely. Barren crops beholden to the buzzing of the wild as strips of colour reach out across the grove. Clusters of blossom wrapped in silent prayer to the fruitful touch of their winged begetter. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading The Bees by Bruce McKinnon. Bruce McKinnon is an American poet and writer. His poems have previously appeared in publications including Boulevard, Hayden's Ferry Review, Indiana Review and the Serenity Review. His poetry collection Mystery Schools won the Washington Writers Publishing House Prize in Poetry for 2007 and he teaches creative writing at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. The Bees by Bruce McKinnon One day the bees start wandering off, no one knows why. First one doesn't come back, and then another and another, until those who are supposed to stay and guard the hive, those who are making the royal jelly and feeding it to the queen, those who form different parts of the great brain, must put down what it is they are doing and go off in search. 
having no choice, not if the hive is going to survive, and where do they go, each one vanishing, never to be seen again, off wandering in the wilderness, having forgotten now, having forgotten what it was they were after, what it was that gave meaning, having known it at one time, now a veil drawn. Is it that each one is a cell, a brain cell, and now they're falling one by one, plaque to Alzheimer's, or the way the cells in the esophagus will begin to mimic the stomach if the acid is too intense? If you're sleeping and the valve won't close, a lifetime of eating and drinking the wrong things, those cells compensating, trying their best, but opening the door to those other cells, the wild ones, the ones that call those bees out there somewhere lost, having nowhere to return at night, their search for nectar fruitful, their their small saddlebags full, but no one to go home to, no home, no memory of home. It's as if they'd stumbled into some alternate world, one looking like ours, but just a glass width different, just a fraction of sunlight different. The patient waking up, finding herself wandering, someone leading her back to bed, but there is no bed. Confusion of the hive, they call it, and the hive dies. Each bee goes down, each light goes out, one by one, blinking out all over town, seen from a great height, as in the night ages darkens as you're parked in your car with your own true love, until it's just you two and the stars, until it's just you. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.